Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Real Next webinar series. Today, we'll be talking about tech-driven tech tenant rep, uh, featuring the Real Next transaction manager, but talking about a lot of different aspects of the Real Next Navigator and how you can use it to develop business and then execute transactions using a technology-driven approach to both win and close transactions. So we will start off in the CRM. Uh, helping show you uh, how to profile your tenants uh, in the contact module, how to deal with larger clients and manage their space portfolios with uh, companies and spaces. And then we'll dig into the digital tour book and show you how you can use a mobile app, a collaborative uh, web environment to work with clients to post potential spaces, post their tour book, uh, enable them to rate spaces, take notes, manage documents, and even negotiate terms with a bid and ask between landlord and tenant. Then we'll show how to take all that information and uh, drive both uh, the subjective uh, comparisons of properties and the objective comparisons of properties. So financial metrics, financial models, and um, uh, qualitative reports that will compare and contrast different offerings. And then to make sure you don't miss a renewal, how do you build timelines to stay in front of transactions and opportunities and to make sure you're top of mind with all of your tenants when it comes time to, for them to expand, contract, renew, deal with options or other negotiation strategies along the life cycle of the lease term. So Matt uh, is joining me today. I'm Jeff Finn, CEO at Realnext. We're delighted to have you all with us. Matthew Smith, uh, my partner in these webinars, will be taking us on a deep dive of the into these uh, different uh, components of the system. And as always, we'll be sending out a recording after the, the session and uh, open for questions along the way. So if you have any questions, please post them. We'll do our best to address them either within the uh, the uh, interactive uh, session that we'll have or at the end of the uh, webinar. So. Matt, I'm going, to, I'm going to turn it over to you and uh, let's get going and talk about tenant profiling and how do you make sure you're cataloging and capturing information with tenant requirements as efficiently as possible. Fantastic as always, Jeff. Thanks for the introduction. I uh, just brewed some French toast coffee. We're going to see how that tastes during this presentation as well. Uh, Mike keeps you updated on how that's going. So there's a couple ways that uh, we can really help you manage requirements for tenants. One is make sure you download our new plugin for Gmail and Outlook. It allows you to turn an email into a contact, and then you can categorize them right inside of your native app, whether that's Outlook or Gmail. Uh, and that really kind of helps get things started, especially when you're out prospecting, uh, door knocking, and so forth, because the main objective is for you to uh, find companies and then put those companies into spaces that they need. So we need to know companies we need to know people at those companies as well as we need to know the, the property and space. So as I'm going and gathering some of this information, we want to make sure that it's easy as possible for you to utilize. So one of the first things that I've done is that I come in here and I go from my contact card view and I click on my list view. From my list view here, I'm able to really start to categorize things. And there's a couple things that are really important to me. Uh, one is, do they currently have a lease? And if they do, when does it currently expire? And if they are looking for new space, what are the requirements for that new space? And so what I did is I created a simple custom view. Uh, so it isolates the information I see. I also want to see if I know anybody else at that company. So if they have multiple locations or any other information they may have uh, that's already in my, my uh, Real Next program here. And to create a custom view, you can simply navigate right over to views, hit edit, and you can create as many views as you want. Uh, each one of these views are going to be, uh, per the login, you can save these views so anybody can access them. So if I come up with a really awesome view that's helping me out, I can then make that view available for Jeff or anybody else on my team. Uh, to find a field, you just type in the field like lease and the information will come up for you. You can also just open each one of these up. And as you double click on the left-hand side, the right-hand side appears and vice versa that allows you to apply it. Simply hit edit on and now you're, as you're following up with each one of these tenants, I don't have a lease expired for Jack. Uh, I made a phone call with Jack and now I can update Jack's information right here. Click my little calendar, he said he's gonna expire on December 3rd. 
and uh, we haven't figured out his requirements yet, uh, but he is looking to increase his footprint of industrial space. Again, you can put any information in here that's important to you. You also can take advantage of our new layouts. Our new layouts will allow you to uh, keep track of investor, tenant, and other agent information, including vendors or attorneys, architects, as well as other agents in the market. Now I customize here to keep track of some simple uh, items uh, like lease expiration, uh, business type, number of employees, uh, NAICS codes, and so forth. Uh, we have a lot of this information available for you in a drop down, like options, uh, two by five year. Those are in a drop down, lease types are in a drop down. And those are the important details that I want to keep track of. Now I decided to color code my fields. Uh, you can go ahead and do the same. To create a custom layout, you just click the upper right hand corner of the screen. You'll see this little uh, piece of paper with writing on it. I highly recommend you do not change the default layout unless you're an individual um, account. And even at that, I recommend you don't. Just go ahead and hit add new layout and you can create one for office. If you're doing um, localized tenant rep and you do office and retail, you wear a couple hats, you can create a couple different views if you want for the different assets that you're focusing in on. But this is a great way to keep track of uh, the contact that you're currently representing. If there's multiple contacts, at multiple contacts at one company you're dealing with or multiple locations, this is a great way to keep track of their uh, individualized requirements if they have multiple uh, requirements across the, the country or even across the globe. So that's an easy way to do it. It allow to keep track of the activity, uh, keep track of things like their um, lease types. So maybe there's a certain type of lease that they're uh, typically expected and so forth. So when you are looking for space, you can find the appropriate space the client is looking for full service, obviously we want to put them in more of a full service space, or uh, maybe we want to introduce them to uh, modified gross lease, let them know how that can benefit them and, and so forth. Uh, so that's a great way to do it. And again, you can go through each one of these records one by one. Uh, you can go through the list, down through the list, left hand or the right hand side. If you're out door knocking, uh, make sure that you download an app like CamCard. Uh, that'll synchronize the Gmail or Outlook and allow you to tie this information directly out of the field as well as stack a building uh, or add all the tenants for retail and industrial in there. Jeff, how are we looking on the next one? Let's move on uh, yeah, to now the, the company levels. This is great when you're dealing with individuals, but uh, many of the, the people on the phone are also maybe, uh, perhaps dealing with regional clients uh, with, a, with a multiple property footprint or uh, even national corporate services work with a, a national or global footprint. And let's let's dig into how do you track those lease renewals and all of the, the details around those space portfolios to see maybe where there are consolidation opportunities or or other um, decisions that we can advise our clients with. And, and Jeff just hit the keyword on the head, advise. Advise our clients on things that they may not know or they may know, right? But your job is to advise them on certain things and this is allow you to help be a better advisor. So you can see in here, I took the liberty of adding some logos. It didn't take me too much time. Uh, you can go ahead and add your own logos in here. Uh, it's pretty easy, drag and drop. Uh, somebody asked me this morning and said, hey, why do you have an organization, subsidiary and company? Why don't you just have a company? It seems to be a uh, little confusing. And I said, here's the reason. He's like, oh, wow. And the reason is because we might have one company that has 15 different locations across the globe. And we want to track who the primary contact is at each one of those locations. And as we do so, we can put a primary contact. Uh, we can see where they're located. This one is in San Diego, California. And if I click on the contact side of things, I can see the contacts throughout the organization. So I know they have a location in West Virginia and Georgia. I can see who the primary contact is in each one of the locations. Maybe they have a regional contact or a national contact uh, and so forth. So I can really start seeing that footprint. But more to Jeff's point, let's see what their space footprint looks like. If they have multiple locations uh, and they're, you know, here they have minimalistic square footage but maybe they want to consolidate two of the spaces and increase the spaces. And that's what recently just came across is where I was talking to Antonio 
And Antonio said they want to consolidate quite a few of the spaces and open up a large 22 to 25,000 square foot industrial building. And I think it's a perfect fit for them. However, I do see that they had some leases that were coming due. We took care of those leases and we'll update those here soon. And then we also have in here leases that are coming uh, later on. So there are ones that we can see that they can consolidate. Uh, we can start seeing when the escalations are so we can give them a call and an adequate amount of time to let them know that um, we have an option coming up in two years, three years, five years. Uh, we'll know some more information uh, on here because I have some more additional notes on each one of these spaces as well. So it gives us an idea of the footprint. I can even look the footprint up on a map. So if I want to map that information out, I can do so. And I'll show you later uh, how we can see it. But here's a footprint of one of the clients. Uh, and you can see that on a map. And you can do this on a uh, globalized map. Uh, or you can do this on a localized map like I did there. Uh, but it really allows you to start seeing the footprint of each one of those. Now, these columns that you see in here, like escalations, options, uh, you can put lease term in here. You can put in uh, other stuff that you want to see. Maybe it's uh, TIs, maybe it's expense stuff or CAMs. Uh, you can put as much information into this view as you want so you can get the full picture of, of what's going on with each one of their spaces. So then again, you can advise them on what to do for their next steps on their lease what, renewals and so forth. Yeah. Well, why don't you drill down a little bit into the in the space itself and see the level of uh, detail you can. In, uh, now you're putting me on the spot, Jeff. Uh, so let's let's do that. Let's go over here and, and open up one of the spaces that they have. Uh, that's going to go up and allow me to pull up the property details so I can see they're in this retail strip here. Uh, and then I also can go ahead and I can pull up that that space itself. Now, if I wanted to go down into space, I would have went ahead and clicked the space button right here. So now I went ahead and looked at the property, but I really want to drill down into space. So I'm going to click the space button at suite uh, 122 or 221 or however that would be. Now, these details that I have on the space uh, are going to be the same details that you are able to see. However, I can have more detailed information. So if this was an industrial building, I might want to know uh, certain things like grade doors, dock doors, amperage. What is the office square footage uh, in their industrial building? What is the clear height? Uh, again, power. And then we have a lot of this stuff that is uh, drop down here for you. And then you can go ahead and, and customize these layouts. This one here is not customized, uh, but you can customize your layouts by just moving these around. We can go to one column. We can go to four columns. We can change those columns around any way we see fit. And we can save those, and then each person can load their columns if they want. So if there's fields in here you don't want to see, take them out. If you want to add more fields, we're, we're happy to help you with that. <clears throat> you can also start seeing a little bit of picture uh, as you're starting to keep track of the lease comps uh, through the uh, RX data tab. You can access our sale and lease comp import wizard. Uh, there is uh, no cost to import that data in as of this moment. You can download the template and it will not only bring in the space, but it will also bring in the comp and tie that information in here. So every time the property traded, you'll be able to see that in this side of here. So then you have your lease comps along with the property, along with the company, along with the primary contact. So it can really start to build out that, that full picture. And if you want to zoom in, you can easily zoom in and just take a look at the building right here. And you can see that's an absolute awesome uh, strip mall in the heart of Las Vegas or somewhere in Las Vegas, maybe not the heart. Matt, uh, a few different things, while, um, uh, both through questions coming in and as I was thinking uh, about it, the um, when you were at that portfolio level of the leases for the building, for the client, uh, how do you, how can I get that out and share it with my client? What are the different uh, ways I can present the, their portfolio to them? Yeah, so one is you can just do a quick print, right? So that's an easy way to quickly print it out. It looks nice. It's really easy to do so. Uh, another way is you can come over in the spaces side of things, and inside of the spaces, I can just do a filter for all the buildings that Logistics Express have. And then from here, we have quite a few reports. Uh, we can even customize a report for you if you need a report customized. So I'm going to go ahead and check this button. Uh, that just gave me a warning that, hey, I need to check a button because we're not going to allow you to print all 5,000 uh, spaces. It's just not something you want to do. And nobody would do it. So that's why we're giving you the warning. So I can say industrial space, office, retail, 
um, a space complete that'll give complete information. Or uh, maybe I'm creating a survey and I want to show some available spaces. I can easily go ahead and create one for available spaces. I can choose how many um, per page, and then I can choose whether there's a photo on the left or right or no photo, and then I can even change the name of that report. More importantly, that report can be sent to PDF. It can be sent to Word uh, or PowerPoint. PowerPoint is my enemy, so I'm not sending it there. Uh, Word is as well. I'm doing a PDF. That's where I'm doing it. Now, also, if you do as a PDF and you do attach it, uh, you can even share that information with a new update to the mobile app. So any of your contacts, companies, properties, attachments uh, now are all shareable through the mobile app, which is super slick. The other then, cool thing here is you can create this view. Again, Matt showed one uh, the way you can select your, your view. And now you can just go right to Excel with a view and, and create the spreadsheet with all of those details as well. So a lot of uh, clients might like to get this type of data in a, a spreadsheet that you can they can uh, work with locally. Uh, Matt, you know, uh, the other one of the other things I wanted to, to get to, um, just quick, you go where you want in a second, but then follow up with this. It's great to have the lease expiration in the database, but how do I get it to show up on my dashboard? How do I run queries against it to know that, I, and I want to run a uh, targeted marketing to my people that are expiring 18 months, uh, 24 months in advance? How do I make sure I'm staying on top of those? Yeah, so great questions. One is I was just showing you a quick way to dial. You can click the dial from here. Uh, so if you do want to dial the tenant, you can do it directly from the space itself. You don't have to go into the tenant. We try to make it as flexible as possible for you. Uh, anytime you want to find information in our program, you simply just go ahead and filter. And then you can keep those filters saved. One of the things that I really enjoy with our filters that I haven't seen elsewhere uh, is the, the ability to choose days. So we can go ahead and we can say uh, lease expiry and make sure you type better than I do. And then you can go ahead and you can say um, is greater than or equal to, but more importantly, you can do today plus or today minus, right? So I think that's important because if we have a lease expire, we can say we want to see all our lease expires that are greater than or equal to today plus 90 days. And what that's going to do is it's going to show all our lease expiries that are out 90 days from today's date. Now I can save that and every day I come in the office, I can go ahead and say, hey, here are all the ones that are going to expire in 90 days or less. Or maybe I want to say, I want to put in minus. What are all the ones that are going to expire between now and 90 days? Or you can set it up where it does both. You can say plus a certain amount of days and minus a certain amount of days. And I think this one uh, may do it. I'm, I'm not sure. We'll see. Uh, I'm going to play the wheel. And it, yeah, so this one here is uh, today plus, we'll say today plus 90 days. Uh, and then we're going to just say today minus, and we'll say, I don't know, 120 days. And again, you can just play around with the different filters. If nothing comes out, obviously change that. But uh, you can play around with your different filters. That's one way you can do it. Another way you can do it is you can simply just create it. Uh, what Jeff loves is a timeline. And in these timelines, all I need to do is right click on the space itself, schedule a timeline. Here's a five lease, five year lease renewal, finish. Obviously, there was some work that I did ahead of time, but it's a five year lease every year. It reminds me to make a phone call. And then in year three, it talks about a renewal option. And then in year four, it talks about begin new search uh, for space for the client. All that now will populate right into my dashboard for me. So if it is a current contact that you're working with, then it's good to have that information in the dashboard. But I really enjoyed it to see it right here. And then I can sort by lease expiration. And then I like to see it this way. So I don't have too many past due events that I'm just never getting to. Uh, but look, some like uh, with this, what tea, this French toast tea, I'm not a big fan of it. I don't recommend it. Um, but some like French toast tea and some like coffee. So uh, use what works best for you. And you can even use a combination, but whatever you do, write it down. Uh, so you know each day you come in the office, you load a filter and pow, there's all your clients. Now, to email them out, all you have to do is pull up the link company and then pull up the link contacts from there. It's just two clicks. It'll give you a list of contacts. And then, <coughs> bada bing, bada boom, you can email them out and let them know, hey, your lease is coming due or congratulations, you signed a lease with us or whatever you, you want to say. Right? That's going to be your message, depending on where you're at in your cycle. 
first year, second year, third year, fourth year, fifth year, 20th, whatever. Keep track of it. And then ask for referrals. Referrals are huge. If you work with me, you know I ask you for a referral every time we talk because uh, that's how I make money and that's how you should too as well. And if you need a template, let us know. I have some great templates here. Uh, one I'll show you a little bit later as we get uh, more into the, the demo, but it talks about how to use a tour book. And Jeff, are we ready to dive into the tour book let's yet? Let's do it. Yep. Yeah, let's get get into the tour book. We, we could talk so, a lot about this stuff, but I think the tour book is the, the focus of the, the session. So why don't we move into that? Yeah, so tour book is pretty awesome. And if you want to been one of my clients for lately, I've really talked hard about the tour book. I think the tour book has been phenomenal for years. I think it's been underutilized. And I think now everybody needs to start uh, getting into a more how you want to tour mindset. And when I see folks tour and I see brokers tour all the time, uh, it's really nice to be able to see uh, one of them handing an iPad to another one uh, and so forth. And if you're an Android person, Android, I'm not uh, biased against uh, Apple or, or Android. But you can create a beautiful digital tour. Uh, again, you're not going ahead and, and, and rebuilding Rome here. What you're doing is you're creating a way that people can go ahead and take a short or a long list and turn it into a short list. You can see the buildings on a map or your client can log in. You also can brand this. Someone asked me recently, hey, Matt, can we brand these? Yes, your company and your colors. I chose this light gray because I think it's nice. But if your colors are blue and your logo is blue, we can put your own logo and we can add your own colors. So when you log in, that's what you see. So it's, this is customized to your company. It's not customized the real next. So this is white labeled, so to speak, quote, white labeled. Now, these tours are dynamic. Right now, it's flooding here in San Diego. So we're not going to go look at that building over in Mission Valley. We're going to move that one down. Uh, so now it updates your client's tour. Also, if you find out the property didn't work, archive it. It updates their tour. Let me ask a thousand actually i'll ask a million marketing admins marketing folks or if you're creating your own tour books how many times have you got the wrong information from the landlord broker and i guarantee you a thousand people will say it's happened if it happens this is all digital and going back and having to recreate it in in powerpoint or whatever you're doing your tours in you can update the information right here oh the square footage was wrong 1473 is wrong. Oh, it's 1573. Great. Now you updated it. Now it updates for your client. It's that simple. You can take pictures in the field. Oh, I want a window here. I want a door here. I think it would look great if we put all the chairs over here. Oh, here's what it would be great uh, if we put in the machinery. Here's what it'd be where we would stage the tractors at. You can drag and drop documents. Your clients can take notes in the field. They can also rate the buildings on what's important to them. That way you can get not only a my score, but you can QNIP score. So many people can tour. You can also see uh, your negotiations. We started out at 780 a square foot, zero free months, $15 in TIs. And then here we go, we hit them hard, pow. We came back, pow, and then we settled on $7.37 a square foot, 3% in escalations, three months free rent, and $15 in TIs. Now, if I wanted to, I can actually even compare these proposals side by side, and it takes me seconds to add in a new proposal. It doesn't take you a long period of time. It's really simple to do. You can graph that proposal, and then remember, your client's going to be able to access this from their mobile app. So I'm going to use a little bit of magic right now. And in the background here, I am trying to pop some other stuff up and hopefully it'll pop up and appear here in a second. And as soon as I do, you're gonna see something really neat. And that is you're gonna be able to see my tour book directly from my phone and what it would look like. Uh, it says that I'm gonna screen mirror on Eduardo's uh, iMac and I don't want that. Eduardo's not going to be happy if I start screen, screening this on his iMac here. Uh, but right now, okay, perfect. I went in here. Now I'm going to load up my tour book. The tour book is free. Your client can download the tour book. So there's no cost for your clients to, to get that tour book. Hopefully everybody can see my screen. Uh, Jeff, I'm not sure if you can or not, but yep. if, 
can't, let me know. You can see that Logistics Express tour. You got it, yep. Awesome. Okay, so one is we can download any new tours if there's any new tours. I have a bunch of tours that are in here. You can download those tours. More importantly, I can see everything on a map. It's interactive. So with iPads being so inexpensive, I recommend you get an iPad, you put this app on it, and you put the background screen of your company. That's it. Don't put anything else on it. Background screen, maybe a contact card to you, whatever. Hand it to your client. Now, your client has the ability to look at what properties are touring. They can also add any notes in the field. They can rate the spaces. They can see any photos you uploaded. They can see a map or get directions to the next property. That's five hours away. It's pretty long. It's probably because it's raining. You can also see the score. Okay, so really need to be able to see all this information. If you're touring with multiple people, you get a cumulative score. If you have multiple tours, you'll see multiple tours on here. These tours do not take long. I had someone recently that was uh, on the tour with me, and we were walking through how to add a property, and he added the property in real quick. Actually, one of the properties I think he had was added already. It, it took a couple minutes, but that's all it took, and then we're able to update all this stuff from here. And it was just absolutely phenomenal to be able to do. Now, you're also going to tell me that I have a client that doesn't want to download the app. Okay, no problem. They don't want to download the app. Let's go ahead and let's do this. We're going to say generate. And then from here, we're going to say download. And now we've downloaded a tour book. This will be your logo, your colors, your information. So disregard this stuff here that says real next. From here, it gives you a nice little table of contents shows your itinerary and what order you're going. Now, if the order changes, all you have to do is hit generate to update this. You don't have to go in and uh, Adobe Photoshop or InDesign or anything. It's all updated for you. And then here is your scores, your properties. Uh, here's the information on it. Uh, OPEC, floor plate, parking costs. And then these are custom. You just type in what you, what's important to your client, right? So, Maybe we're looking at one building and it's got higher cams than the other building, but it's the same square footage and dollar. How do we look at that? This will be able to give you a complete tour report. Also, if you attach any flyers into here, all those flyers will turn into that, that tour book for you. To invite somebody to a tour, all you have to do is add them right in your tour and hit email tenant login. To add somebody to a tour, it's as simple as coming in here and adding their email address, just like I did for Jeff, James, and Steve. You can change your primary colors, and these are your primary colors that are going to be on your report or your core book. Maybe it's a purchase you're working with. It doesn't just have to be a lease. Change it to a purchase. This is great. And then you'll see little mouse over. This is new. This is a renewal. And this is going to be an extension or, or sorry, an expansion. I guessed wrong. And then we have all the different types in here for you. Uh, you can type in here to add a building. If the building doesn't show up, you can easily just add it. But you can see here we have thousands of buildings in here uh, for you. So it's it's really nice to be able to create this and it's completely digitized or it's not. It's really up to you and how you like it. Uh, so you can choose that and you have plenty of actions. Maybe we want to go back and say, you know, we really like that one building that we archived you can go ahead and, and archive and uh, reactivate buildings from the past. But I'm a firm believer in it, out of sight, out of mind. If you've ever been with me, you know that I'm indecisive. And if you keep showing me buildings, I'm gonna go ahead and keep touring buildings. And if you tour with me, we're gonna be looking at about, I don't know, 785 buildings before we find one. And I'll tell you this, Jeff uses a tour book and every time he tours with me, he knows that I'm really indecisive and he keeps on archiving those other ones so I forget. And that way we just settle on one or two buildings and it just makes it absolutely beautiful. We do have a section here called Guide Me that will help you walk through this. You can always book an appointment if you need some additional help. And your local team members, myself and Jen and Kevin and Justin, we're all around here to help you with this. We live, eat and breathe commercial, re uh, commercial real estate. Super easy to do. Uh, super easy to access, and it does give you a lot of uh, availability. You can also go here. I know Jeff's hankering to go, well, what about the compare proposals? Well, we can compare proposals right here um, to the three different buildings, and we can start looking at that. 
Uh, and we can look at what's our total rent and our average monthly costs and, and our TIs and so forth. And you know, what's our TI allowance and what's that average rent rate and, and how do the cans affect our, our lease and so forth? Because we're used to full service. And it's interesting, I've been seeing a lot of things on social media about tenants getting can reconciliation uh, updates where, you know, landlords haven't been doing that in the years past and now they're getting them. It's important to understand how cams are going to affect your lease and um, to see that. It really is. That's why I like full service. No cams for me, it's all packed in there. Um, but again, it's a great way to do it. You can color code your spaces, A, B, C, D. Uh, you also, I do have C in here, but you can't see it because it's right on top of B. Matt, uh, a couple of uh, questions. That, and one thing you didn't show yet is the comparative analysis of the, the space, not the financial one, the the uh, all the notes and all of the issues uh, related to it, sort of the, the met key metrics that you want to track. Yeah, so that's, again, all specified by you. What are the headers of those columns? You pick them and fill them out, and then we'll give you the, the matrix of, of the comparison, and you can edit them in the, the system, or as Matt's doing, show edit right here on the form. Yeah, I'm a big form editor. Um, so for me, i rather just have all my spaces here. Uh, I'll go ahead and select them all, and then I'll come down here and I'll compare. Uh, and then as a compare, I'll edit the information all right here because I can do it all at one time. Uh, where if it's individual, each one, I have to go in, I'll forget what I'm doing. I'm just not that smart. Uh, you can also add notes and you can voice dictate your notes into there and you can export it all to Excel if you need to. But um, again, right here, I want to go here and edit OPEX or custom. Instead of going in, in if you have 50 spaces and you want to customize this, uh, I'm going to put in here office uh, or I'm just, I don't know, signage. I need got to learn how to spell signage instead of going in and changing signage in each one of these i can change signage in all of them just from right here it's just a great way to do it i'll, cre I'll create a new video and update that because i think that's something cool that people overlook uh when they're one creating. of the other things that, that, that someone is asking about and uh, just to be clear in the tenant rep world you're these aren't all your listings so you're working this is all uh, inventory that could be some of in in your shop you could have the listing it could be well, from one of your competitors or some list, leasing agent in the market so you're able to gather that information bring it into your system and, and present it uh, as the tenant rep with all of the other agents information in the system and there's a question about can you use this for acquisitions absolutely so we have a lot of people using it while it's built as a tour book it, it works just as well uh, for uh, touring properties for acquisitions and again you can bring in any property that you know about in the market that you want to present it doesn't have to be your listing these are sir this is your your private uh, area to manage information and showcase with your client what you should do if you're looking for um, dispositions what you should do is you should create a tour book and call it real next Matt's acquisition and then I want you to add Jeff Finn to there and then boom, and then throw all your properties in there that Jeff could possibly buy. That'd be a great <laughs> way to spend the rest of his month looking through all the emails from everybody, adding them into the tour books. And then we'll see how fun that is. <laughs> You're the man, Where man. I might not have you on any of these sessions buy. going forward. <laughs> We're gonna get Jeff to buy some buildings on this webinar here. Hopefully everybody's having a good time and enjoying themselves. One of the things that I really wanna stress is uh, look, we're, we're really, we want it, we want to take our long list, we want to create it into a short list, and then we really want to educate our clients, not only on some of the details of, of the leases, but I hear a lot of things, like someone said the other day that, that you know, hiring a tenant rep is the biggest waste of money, and I wholeheartedly disagree. I think if you have a great tenant rep, it's the best amount of money you can spend, and show them why they're wrong if they have any kind of questions on that. And this will allow you to do that. But once we short list Matt, you raise a really good point. We, we show this in the context of executing a transaction. But if you are pitching for a, a, a exclusive right to represent a tenant and you show them how you're going to communicate with them and do it digitally and put information in their hands in real time and not send them or you know have a, tons of paper that they have to carry or, or pdfs that they have to print out and work with it this is a uh, the new way the better way and a more efficient way to 
collaborate and they can communicate back and forth with you and you can work together to get transactions done and take it to the next step matt maybe dig into the comparative lease analysis we have the high level analysis that that comes with the uh with the, the the tour book but once you're narrowing it down to the final short list to go in depth and if you want to get uh, a deeper dive here's how you do that yeah and remember this information that that i have in here was information that i already had in my real next program you may or may not have that if you don't it's still really easy to add the information it doesn't take a long period of time you would add this to something else anyways but when i talk to folks that are using word and powerpoint and excel and everything else once that document saved it's gone forever once you put it in real next it's easily accessed so if you add the space information in here and it takes you 20 minutes to add the the building stack of the rent roll that information is able to be used here and it's able to be used on our uh email marketing it's able to be used in, in our listing site when you do it in a word doc or an excel doc it's it that's it you forgot about it it's gone um here is five spaces I'm analyzing. Uh, my lease data was preset from base rent uh, to recoveries. We have areas in here for other OPEX, uh, improvements, furniture, fees, moving expenses, commissions. Uh, you can go ahead and you can really look and analyze these spaces. Uh, more importantly, why are they hiring you? So we can look at these five spaces here and we can see the different square footage and that's great but now we can go in here and we can see the different lease types uh, we have a couple triple net we have a modified gross and a full service uh, educate your client on what the difference is they may or may not know uh, and those are things that are important to them because they can just go to any listing site and they can search spaces themselves and then put themselves in really harm's way and that's why we're starting to see tenants starting to default because they're working and trying to negotiate their own uh, own renewals with the landlords and so forth and some are are doing it well and other ones aren't. We can see their options, what they have right in here in plain sight. Uh, we can also see things like, what's the total rent gonna be? And is this rent able to be handled by them? Are they able to afford it? Uh, and then also other things, again, you get into, you know, modify gross and so forth. We have additional CAM fees. Uh, let's take a look at, at that and the total impact. And then uh, on top of that, it comes out in a beautiful presentation. So this would be custom branded for your, your company with your logo and your colors on it. Uh, you can choose different cover pages in here. If you are part of a, a organization that already has Real Next Market Edge, you might have something in here. Uh, it shows things like your uh, cash flow uh, summary here, but also your lease schedule. I don't give a copy of lease schedule to my client. Here you go, here's your lease schedule. Uh, this is what it would look like for each one of the spaces. Uh, what's my total rent? And what does it look like in a nice little chart? Now we can see what the total rent is, uh, so we can help them uh, make a decision. One of the things that I really like, and I, don't, I haven't really seen it used that much anymore. Um, obviously, I'm on a different side, but we can actually analyze each one of the spaces. But more importantly, let me go to services here, and I'm going to hit Market Edge. And if you use Market Edge, send me one of these, because I think it's really cool. Uh, what I did is I actually took this digital or this, this uh, PDF format, which you can send to PDF or email or e-publish. And I created a little website. So I created a website and you can see in here that we have the properties now, they're on a map. And I can send this link here to my client and I can say, look, we, we Jeff, we shortlisted it down to five properties and I want you to take a look at them. And here are the five properties that we feel are best for you. Uh, it'll have your company, it'll have your company logo. It'll show the property on a map here, just like I did here. Uh, and then also they can click charts and they can see the charts. Uh, you can look at what your monthly is, what your monthly square footage is. And now if I want to compare these, I can come down here and I can click compare. And if I check all the compare boxes, you can see which wins. And this one here for Sahara uh, Ranch of Corporate Center was the best for my client. And it's 202,000, my present value 194, effective <clears throat> rate. I can see all this now. It works out great. Um, and again, it will have all your information, including your little your little T. We probably need to update that into the X. Uh, we're all going to call it Twitter no matter what. But it, it, this is great. I think it's awesome, and I think it's underutilized. And you might not know it's there. Uh, if you didn't know it's there, it's my fault. Just click Services, Market Edge. It turns this PDF into a beautiful uh, digital format and a nice little hyperlink that you can send to your client. But I feel it's a... 
a fantastic uh, way to show all that. And then after all that's done, uh, we want to go through and, and Jeff, any questions on this here? I know we're getting up again. Uh, my mic was muted. Sorry, uh, no questions on this, but there's some other questions. So before we wrap up, I'll get get those other questions with you. Yeah, and then again, next, if you want to keep track of your lease expire, we kind of went into that before. Uh, we can see tenant profiles on a map. We can zoom in and zoom out. We can see traffic conditions. We can see transit routes. We can uh, get all different things. So if you want to see a client's portfolio, we can do that. And then we can easily email out right through our program. And one of the emails that I'm happy to give you if you want is one that I created here. And it talks about enhancing the client experience with Real Next Transaction Manager. And I think it's a really good attention grabber. And it talks about five reasons why you should use Transaction Manager versus using a tenant rep without using Transaction Manager. I think this adds five, 100% uh, right here. Each one of these is 100% more likely of you winning that assignment, especially with a large national tenant. Maybe you're an individual uh, shop or you're a small shop and they're used to being represented by one of the top four, uh, big four companies that are out there. Well, this is a great way for you to get in front of them and start representing them with a boutique shop and show the big dogs that the boutique can do just as much as everybody else. You can send it at a certain time it merges the information, so the more data you have, the more, more merge fields you have, and you can even send it like at 4 a.m. or something, so everybody thinks you're sending emails while you're in your, your uh, cold plunges. I know we're getting close to time, Jeff. It's, uh, uh, yeah, so a couple of things. You know, one of the questions was, how do you send, if I want to send to a group, I get that, and, and what you didn't show is how the record of each send is going to show up in that client's history so as you talk to them in the future you'll you'll have a record of everything you you've sent to them and if you're you're using your outlook sync you'll also have your archive of, of inbound and other traffic from outlook but if i just wanted to send to bob jones a an email can i send it from real next and what would be the advantage of that yeah so just check the box real campaigns proceed the advantage is is one you can select off your templates right so you might have a certain um, cadence that you do one two three initial outreach I have it and if you purchase software from me you'll see mine and you'll know mine um, there's templates so one I like the templates two they have merge fields so it gives it more of a personalization three you can schedule it for a later point in time <clears throat> I typically don't like sending emails on Mondays or Fridays I like sending them Tuesday Wednesday Thursday and I like sending them early in the morning because uh, that way when I come in the office, I start getting responses. I think it's fantastic. So you can send it at a later point in time and schedule it. And then ultimately, you can really see the details on what transpired when you did send that email out. And I think knowing the stats is, is okay, but being able to use that and execute on those stats is even more important. So I had eight people, including Jeff, open the email. I'm going to go ahead and put them into a group, and I'm going to call those tenants first because uh, they interacted with my email and if i put some uh you know some uh call to action in there boom there you go now i can call them and say hey you saw my tour book you saw my video on how to do a tour you think that's pretty cool let me add you to my tour and we'll start touring again i think it's a great way to do that so i think that's the advantage of it I think that's really cool. And one of the great things is it for an individual send is that you get off the phone with Bob and you want to have a follow up. So you just drop that template, a couple of good tweaks to customize it based on uh, some of the conversation that you had. So, you know, you know, sort of three kept paragraphs might be in the bag and one you, you add, you then send it. And then, as Matt said, you're going to know whether he opened it and how, how he engaged he, he was. And uh, that's going to really support your follow up and uh, marketing ongoing and and then in here in your dashboard if they re responded you would see that in here they responded to your email so not only can you see their opens clicks opt out but you can also see that when they respond and that's that's awesome as well if you send an email out and people respond to your email then you know you got a great subject uh and a great um content in your email and you should definitely use that as a template you want to explain, yeah. Matt, uh, some, there's questions about domains, and so how is it sent, and then and, and, and talk about some of the options we have. Yeah, so um, custom domains here, 
you can do the custom domains on it and domains will come out at info at uh, your domain dot com uh, or list at your domain dot com and then any of the replies will come back right into your Outlook email. Sorry, we're running a little late. I just had to send a quick email right there. Um, what was the other part of the question, Jeff? I'm sorry. Did you the, about the private domains? Yeah, yeah, yeah private domain. It's, it's at your domain. So it's it's at nsmith.com. Uh, it's it's at initial3.com. It's at uh, you know, finmoney.com. It's at your.com. Um, however, even if it's not, it does come out and it will say your 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 company, your name, and it looks great. Uh, so we have a lot of uh, high deliverability rates. And I wish I had that image. Uh, oh, I think I do have the testimonial here. I'm not going to put it up too long because I want you to just take a look at it. But this uh, this awesome gentleman right here, Rich Ennerlin, I've known him for way too long, uh, but he 85% of his emails were delivered that he was sent into, uh, and he had a deliverability rate of like 55% through one of the competing programs. So that 85% was much, and that was right away. He probably got another, uh, you know, 14% delivered later on in that evening. But that testimony was huge for him to come in from one of the major, major competitors out there to use in our email marketing and the deliverability was that much higher that he wrote a testimony for us and that was pretty cool outstanding well thank you matt thanks everyone um i think that's what we've got uh, yeah, yeah and that's... remember this is going to be recorded i have people emailing me right now is it being recorded is it being recorded and all these other things um that you can see it so um, yeah, so it'll be recorded, it'll be up on our YouTube, and um, we will all... be sending it back out to you if by Monday. You'll get uh, a replay, and for those that registered for the, the session, you can share it if you'd like. And again, as Matt said, all of our conferences, all of our webinars are up on the, the Real Next YouTube channel. So, uh, Matt, yeah, and I... by the way, if, if Jeff ends up buying a property in California, I'm getting 3% on the. Uh... <laughs> buy side there on his tour thanks everybody for coming on i appreciate you hope you have a great week if you're in san diego stay safe and uh, we'll talk to you soon thanks everybody thank you matt thanks everybody bye-bye